Now on the phone this morning to talk about how Connecticut is helping with the recovery efforts in Puerto Rico is Senator Richard Blumenthal. Senator, thanks for joining us this morning. Wonderful to be talking to you here from here in Puerto Rico. So, Senator, you have boots on the ground right now. You're in Puerto Rico. Let's just start with this. What's the status of like food, water, the utility grid? Have people's basic needs been compromised? Puerto Rico remains an island in crisis. Weeks after this earthquake, there are still people living in tents. All the schools are closed in the southwestern part of Puerto Rico. The students are now coming back to school. They've missed weeks and weeks, and they're coming back to tents, not regular schools, because the schools largely have been devastated, and healthcare facilities are at risk. And that's why what Connecticut is doing, whether it's AmeriCares or the Hartford Parade Committee or other volunteer organizations is so important, and I'm so impressed by the courage and resilience of people on the island, but also the generosity and great spirit of their families and the Puerto Rican community and everyone in Connecticut. The Yale, New Haven, Northeast Medical Group has been absolutely fantastic, and people are really feeling the benefit of it, but there's still the need for the federal government to do its responsibility. And I'm going back to Washington to fight for the funds that should have been provided well before now. So as we uh, are talking here, Senator, we're seeing the video of the damage and some of the recovery efforts and the houses with the red X's, which are scheduled to be knocked down. And you were mentioning the federal government. Do you think the federal government is doing to enough to assist in Puerto Rico's recovery and rebuild? Let me be very blunt. The federal government is doing nowhere near enough. In fact, our nation is failing our fellow Americans in Puerto Rico, of the uh, hundreds or tens of billions of dollars authorized, only a fraction has been released because the Trump administration has blocked it. But larger scale, Puerto Rico needs a new electric grid, new sources of power, new schools and health facilities, education, and the children of Puerto Rico are particularly suffering because of the lack of federal aid. And so a new generation of uh, people here in Puerto Rico have been shortchanged by the federal government. And I am fighting, I have been fighting to correct that deficiency. I'm going to go back to Washington with these pictures. You know the old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. That's why TV is so important in this battle and why I appreciate being with you today. And Senator, as you speak to people over there, are you getting a sense that they want to relocate and come here to the mainland, or do they want to stay and fight and, and rebuild where they are? The people of, love, of Puerto Rico love Puerto Rico. People here love the island. It is a beautiful island. And I will tell you what strikes me most in my visit here, and I've been here many times before, after the hurricane, a couple of times, is the resilience and the courage of people here. They are endlessly generous and good-spirited, even in the face of the most extreme adversity. I was at a church yesterday. It's been virtually destroyed. The, the priest came Wonderful. out of the tents where they worship now with some of his parishioners. They are uh, really so good-spirited and warm and welcoming and good-humored. You know, they are uh, endlessly filled with jokes. So uh, they want to stay here. It's their island, and America should welcome their staying here. Three million people add tremendously to the diversity of Connecticut. We have a wonderful Puerto Rican community, but we don't want to... Uh, foster a kind of brain drain because the island needs the pediatricians and the surgeons and the teachers and the engineers who are going to help to rebuild it. And I see a, a bright future ahead because uh, people of Puerto Rico love this island. And Senator, uh, you saw what Governor Ned Lamont did the other day with the funding that is being allocated towards uh, people who want to relocate here to Connecticut. How long do you think that can stretch out? Do you think that's going to be enough money? And is the state doing enough to help? My hope is that the federal government 
will meet its responsibility and provide the aid that's necessary to rebuild power plants. I visited one yesterday, close to Sur, that is completely shut down. Rebuild the schools. I visited kids studying in tents yesterday, open to the elements. Uh, rebuild health facilities. I visited the one in Guanaca that has cracks and it's being repaired. But if the federal government does its job, the burden on Connecticut will be lessened. But right now, we have a responsibility in Connecticut, and thanks to Governor Lamont, even more important thanks to the very generous Puerto Rican community in Hartford and around Connecticut, all around Connecticut, really, and thanks to the organizations like uh, AmeriCares, who are down here with volunteers and supplies uh, performing this vital service. Connecticut is proud of its Puerto Rican community. We have a larger Puerto Rican community than any other state in the whole country per capita, the largest in the country per capita, and they add diversity and spirit and culture to our communities, and uh, we're very proud of them. A very vibrant Puerto Rican community indeed. That's Senator Richard Blumenthal joining us live on the phone from Puerto Rico. Senator, thanks for being with us. And if you're looking to help, the Hartford CICD Puerto Rican Parade Group is still looking for donations. You can head to fox61.com or the Fox 61 News app and look for links mentioned on TV.